Hi everybody, Catfish Jones here. All of my internet cousins, welcome to a little bit of Car Talk with Catfish. Have a kind of fun topic to talk about today. But first I just wanted to remind everybody to check and make sure you're still subscribed. I know there's always some wonkiness with YouTube and uh, people get unsubscribed to channels they like. And if you look and find out you're not subscribed, well, go ahead and click that subscribe button. It means a lot to me. Had uh, kind of a crazy day here in the middle of Kansas, walloped pretty well by some of that winter weather. My little corner, however, we, we didn't get walloped too bad. There was about an hour of heavy snowing with tiny little flakes. Nothing stuck to the ground. But not too far away, there was six, six inches here, nine inches there, highways covered, cars in the ditches. It was, it was not pretty. But uh, old catfish made it out safe. Punched out of work, and here I go on my way. And I may continue my venture home a little farther away than where I usually turn to maybe try to capture some video footage of that carnage in the most respectful possible way I can. No, today I wanted to talk a little bit about Mardi Gras. I believe today is Fat Tuesday, which is the culmination of Mardi Gras week. Here in Kansas, we don't ever do anything with Mardi Gras. Never really knew much about it. But in 2001, I made a decision to move to New Orleans. I was in a band for a number of years with my best friend and my brother, um, doing all originals and making a lot of fun stuff and learning how to write songs together and identifying what we liked about each other's songwriting and, and growing as songwriters and individuals. And uh, somewhere in the middle of 2001, the band broke up, and at the time, it really devastated me. So much of my identity was wrapped up in the band. That band was called Row 6. Um, not sure if there's much Row 6 content out there on the internet. There was at one time, in the early days of the internet, but I think most of it just exists offline. We made one early record, um, late 90s, 98, 99, something like that, and it was just a five-song record, but man, was it slick. Those songs were great, the recording quality was fantastic, and uh, we had a lot of fun with it. I'm very excited to get a finished, polished product back that we could use as a business card, and it was everything we had hoped it could be. Um, and from there, we spent a couple years growing with our writing and adding songs to our catalog and eventually decided to make another record. First record was called Weather. Second record we decided would be called Safe Place to Hide. But, and there's always a but, that project never came to completion. We got it entirely recorded, had uh, some good mixes we liked, and eventually kind of came up with a finished product, had all of the art pretty much decided and sorted out, maybe not finalized completely, but uh, we're, we're really polishing it off, and then it, then it kind of fell apart. Um, and like I say, that, that falling apart really devastated me, because my identity was so much wrapped up into that band. 
years later, it's easy to look back and say that it was absolutely the right move, and without necessarily assigning blame, the biggest reason was that my younger brother wanted to go and go to college and, you know, pursue a career after that, and he did a fantastic job at it, and now is very successful in his professional life. And as much of a grudge as I held then, I, I can't do anything other than tell him it was the right idea. Um, I just wasn't prepared for it and didn't really handle it the best. Um, so the rest of that year was really tough for me. Of course, if that was halfway through 2001, we all know the world changed a few months later, drastically changed a few months later. And I just had to get out of my little echo chamber, the little wonderful world that I live in here in central Kansas, uh, my comfort zone, and, and just kind of thrust myself on the world. So there at the end of 2001, I think I got there really right in the last week or so of 2001, a good friend of mine and I decided to move down to New Orleans. I was working at a hotel overnight, and I just randomly called up the hotel there. Uh, it was a Marriott brand, Fairfield Inn, so I called up the Fairfield Inn there and talked to their night desk clerk, and she was a cool person, said, hey, you know what? The neighbor next door to us is moving out. How about we save your apartment and we just move in right here? But like, that's awesome. Worked out very well. New Orleans is uh, a destination town, so hotel jobs were not that difficult to come by. And it was a, a very convenient little situation. A um, little bit of side story. My good friend and her ended up developing a relationship in that time and ended up getting married after Hurricane Katrina. They left New Orleans and moved back to Kansas and they're still together here in this town just because I randomly called up some hotel in the middle of the night and said, I want to move to New Orleans. And that's, uh, I don't know, that's kind of the magic of randomness. Anyway, I was down in New Orleans in 2002 for Mardi Gras. And it was such an interesting experience with all kinds of stuff I had never experienced before. The parades are just over the top. People get out of work and school for the whole thing. And it's just, it's just a, an awesome party. It also happened to be a year where the Super Bowl NFL culmination was in New Orleans that year, a week or so after Mardi Gras. So people really didn't stop partying once Mardi Gras was over. But Fat Tuesday is the final day of Mardi Gras where people party all night and then wake up on Wednesday, which is Ash Wednesday, go and get their ashes and then go sleep off their, their party and, and, and usually go back to normal. But uh, that year they didn't really go back to normal because it was Super Bowl time and let's redo the party again. Any reason to party. St. Patrick's Day, anything. Let's just party. Um, and can you fault them? If you're in an awesome town like New Orleans with the energy and atmosphere that, that exists there, uh, wonderful food, fantastic people. Um, New Orleans specifically is, is kind of a a gathering place for freaks and weirdos of all varieties, and uh, it was very interesting for me. I didn't stay there very long, about six months or so, before I realized, you know what, I think I've learned everything about myself I can learn here. I'm so terribly homesick that I really need to get back there, and uh, before long I flipped over the table scattered the chess pieces, and made my way back to Kansas. So that's a little bit of a story, a little bit of background on old Catfish Jones. Um, a fantastic adventure, maybe my best adventure yet. 
something that I'll always cherish and usually always talk about any chance I get and uh, help help to make me the catfish I am today a unique person who is now completely wrapped up in this identity so much so that I narcissistically regularly make YouTube videos and share them with all you fine folks so hope you guys enjoyed that little talk a little bit about the history of row six a little bit about my fun time in New Orleans the most interesting thing I learned I'm pulling into my drive so I better wrap this up before I take another jaunt and check out some of the carnage to me one of the most interesting things I learned is how to get somebody's attention when they're on a parade float and you want them to throw you something um, the, the tactic that I was taught by the locals and it was so awesome having locals right there the whole time to help me learn the ins and outs and not get stuck in a, a tourist trap there um, to get somebody's attention on a float you have to make some noise and then point right at them when you point at them they say oh look that person's pointing me and they don't always make it all the way to you if you're multiple people deep but it's a it's a good way to have them throw you what you want beads or masks or candies or whatever it is uh, parades were intense some of them in the daytime, some of them in the nighttime. I mean, I went to two or three different parades and we didn't go to all of them. So there's just tons of them all over the place. And some of the most over the top floats, I'm sure you guys have seen internet video of some of the parade floats going on over there and all week, culminating on Fat Tuesday, where you finish your party up, head out in the morning and get your ashes and Go from there so what a fun story I'm glad I got to share with you guys if you guys have any questions or comments or anything like that please feel free to leave them below I would love to continue the conversation from there but until I see you guys again be super well keep an eye out for maybe a carnage video if that actually materializes I might just go in and take a nap who knows <laughs> I've been catfish Jones you guys have been fantastic and I will see you again very soon. Cheers.